Oh, he's going back. Whoa. <laughs> Go on. Holy, it's going crazy. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice pike. Nice pike. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, almost. Oh, I think it's a nice pike. Oh, it's a muskie. Oh, it's a muskie. Good job. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Prince Craft Boats, the spirit of boating. Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. And Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Hi everyone, welcome to the premiere episode of the new Fishing Canada season. We thought it'd be kind of fitting if we actually started this run of episodes with literally our very first shoot of the year. Our destination is Killarney, Ontario. Well, Sportsman's Inn was built in the 1800s. Uh, this is probably the third rendition of the actual place. We're a full service resort. Uh, we offer everything from premium fuel to our Anchorage dining room to um, our Sportos pub, which is the central part of Killarney, basically. That's where people come People come here to meet. There's uh, some record sized muskie in the area, a northern pike, smallmouth bass. Um, and if you go the other way, there's lots of trout. So there's a little bit of everything, I think, and, and the fishing is still really, really good. Short drive to get here, lots of dockage here, lots of power. Um, we have pump outs, we have everything here, so this is, a, this is a good spot. As you'll see in this episode, this shoot is all about shaking the rust off. And in our opinion, there is no better species to do this with than the northern pike. Now we're no strangers to this area. Years ago, Pete shot a fantastic triple species episode with northern pike, smallmouth bass, and muskie. He came back with rave reviews for both the fishing and the accommodations in the Killarney region. So, we thought it's time to return. Pike season is one of the first to open in southern Ontario. But more than that, these early spawning, hard fighting fish allow you to put your gear to the test and get your year moving in the right direction. Our trip started out as they often do, meeting with locals to get a lay of the land and a status update on our target species. On this shoot, it's a guy called, not by his name, but by his hair color, Red. Red is a lifelong Killarney resident who has made his living as a fishing guide and knows the north shore of Georgian Bay like the back of his hand. He told us that we were just two weeks removed from ice out and that these recently spawned fish were just about to re-enter feed mode. Best of all, the places where these fish were doing their replenishing were shallow, clear, and all within 20 miles of camp. At sunrise, we met Red at the docks, eager to get an early start and get the first shoot, first day jitters out of the way. Tukes are still necessary despite the calendar's recent turn to May and frost still covered the seats of our Prince Crab. Spring is here, but winter has not fully given up its grip. With seats cleared and hoods tightened, we left the docks in the wake of Red's aluminum tiller boat. He repped around the boulders like his boat was on tracks. As for us, we carefully stayed in his wake. Red is a rare breed these days as he still operates without a GPS or chart plotter. Every route we ran was mapped out nowhere but in his mind. Ed, he knew every rock on a first name basis. Modern technology has certainly enhanced the way we fish but Red's seat-of-your-pants navigational skills sure are hard not to envy. Oh, he's going by. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> God. Holy, it's going crazy. Our first location is one that I'm familiar with, a small rocky bay just a couple miles from the lodge. It's one of the areas we hit on my last shoot here. Then it was about deep water late in the year. This time, it's about the bay's rocky shorelines, new weed growth, and incoming creeks. Perfect for early season northern pike. Got one inch. Oh, it's a smallie. Good one? No, it's a smallie. Oh, boy. 
I'm the jerk, Boy, babe. You're gonna have that's gonna want, happen. You want those later on. <laughs> yeah, another month, month and a bit. So right now we're pike fishing. Pike and walleye are the only two game fish species open here right now. But you, well, a lot of times you're throwing baits like you just throwing a twitch bait. I'm throwing a, a jerk bait, and you hope I can do this without pliers. And you inadvertently catch these guys, and then whoa. Come on. All these hooks, it makes it hard to... Is there's a big gray area that the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources is working on right now in Ontario. I don't know about the rest of the provinces, but here, that fish, it's not illegal to catch. It's illegal to fish for, but it's not illegal to catch. It's inadvertent, right? It's just an incidental catch. What, is, what would be illegal is if I had taken that fish right there, and went, look at that smallmouth, everybody. That's, what a beautiful fish. Okay, let's put them back. It wouldn't be illegal taking the pictures of the fish. It's illegal in delaying the release. So that's the big gray area right now with everybody take, wanting to take pictures and all that. It's not illegal to take a picture. It's just illegal to delay the release, right? There's so. a, a survey going on right now. Yeah. Um, online that anybody can participate in to, to, because they're asking us, what do you think? Can we put this this tiny little uh, uh, change to the legislation that would allow Pete, for example, who just caught that fish, would allow him to actually pick it up and get a photo or video shot of it and then put it back in the water like he did, as opposed to having to release it immediately? You can't avoid the smallmouth, and if there's largemouth in the air, you're not going to avoid the largemouth either, because the pike are shallow, going out, as Anne says, going out, bass are shallow coming in. So you can't, you, so all you got to do is protect the fish. And that and it's that extra five seconds that you say, hey, everybody, look at that picture, that's what the gray area is right now. So you got to remember, that's the same with all species. Muskies, if there's a muskie, uh, a 48 inch size limit, and you've got a 35 inch muskie, it's a beautiful fish, you take a picture of it, it's, not, it's illegal because you're delaying the release. So you got to remember that on all your species. Oh, he's going by. Whoa. <laughs> God. Oh, yeah, we got to get oh, out of here. This is like loaded here around this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. Yes. So here's something right now, folks. We got we just caught three small in a row, so we will leave the we spot will. because we're as we're hard as it is. Oh, yeah. Good. And they're big too. Look at this stupid thing. Yeah, they're nice. So we'll get off this point. No, maybe the next one. There's, they gotta be out. There's gotta be pike in here, Pete. Yeah, yeah. There's gotta it be. It looks great. I've lost a hook out of this deal. What? I got a, I got a, a double instead of a treble. Oh, nice. Unfortunately, what screams pike in northern Ontario also screams smallmouth bass. And we quickly learned that this little portion of the bay was soon to be their spawning domain. Time to move on. See you in the summer, little bassies. Our second spot looks similar to the first, but this time we immediately knew pike were the dominant species. This was easy to tell because right after Anne's killed the merc and stood up on the front deck, a big pike spooked out from beneath the boat. We followed her around for a bit, but we knew that no bait was going to fool this beast. Thankfully, she wasn't the only fish in the area. Not much of a pike, but I'll tell you what, it's a good sign. Pike, sand, maybe. He's hooked quite, nice. quite well. Our first pike of the season. Hey, first pike of the day, first pike of the season. Look at that. <laughs> hey, little, little snaky for us. Not much of a pike, but we're actually happy about that. <laughs> hey? Believe it or not. Believe it or not, we're happy with this guy because we know we weeded through it. We just came through an area of, and then Ann said, there's a big sand point along here. So we said, okay, well, you know, some mollies in the sand too. We want to watch ourselves. We stayed away off of it. Maybe we'll get some pikeys now. Would be nice. That's just on a, a, a perfect spring pike bait. Uh, any time of year pike bait. That's a Yozuri 110 uh, suspending jerk bait. You play around with it and then you find something that works. Sometimes it's really fast, bang, 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 and wait. Sometimes it's just a, believe it or not, a slow reel and pause. There's all kinds of things you can do with them, but they're deadly. Yeah. Let's play him. He's coming, buddy. Come on. Got to be a bass, so off I took rock. him right off that rock. <laughs> doesn't that, doesn't that feel big? But, uh, he's, he's swimming like a pike. He's swimming like a pike, isn't he? That little, little pike. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice little pike. Oh, you crazy dog. <laughs> with, with fluorocarbon. <laughs> with fluorocarbon right there in that beautiful glistening sunlight. 
I picked up this rod. I had it rigged up earlier on without a... Oh, this is easy. Yeah, it'll be easy. You don't know what pound test you got? I can, <laughs> I, can I put a little pressure on it? That's all you I'm saying. You have 15. 15? Oh, my God. 15 pound Yozuri hybrid. Oh, stretchy stuff, too. Yeah. And there's that. There you go, bud. There. Nice little... Oh, scar belly. Oh, another scar. Another one scarred up, bud. Wow. Solid little fish. Be a perfect shore lunch fish, I'll tell you that right so now. So we found out something interesting at dinner the other night at uh, at the uh, lodge that pike spawn in uh, in balls and they bite and gash and slash on each other. So, and I didn't know that. I had no that, idea. That's Never heard totally of that. New. Holy, it's going crazy. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice pike. Nice pike. Yes. No, no. Not big. They're, it's not the ones we just saw. Oh, wait a second, though. Look at this. Wait till you see the side of this fish. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> what would do that? Would that be a muskie or something that does that? Or another pike. Or another pike? Yeah, he's been uh, damaged. Wow. Hopefully I can get him in. Look at that. Oh my God. That is insane. That's a big bite. That's like three big bites. What the? You gotta wonder what in the world lives down there that would do that, right? <laughs> like you say, it's either another pike. Yeah. Look at that. Well, muskier pike. One of the... Yeah. Wow. Poor guy. Mm -mm -mm. You know what, buddy? Your lucky day. You got bit by them. We're throwing you back. <laughs> Whew. See ya. Wow, he took off. He's still healthy. He followed and he finally hit, yeah. I went to that smaller twitch, twitch bait on this guy. That might be the difference, eh? Yeah. Problem is, he's gonna go again. He's gonna get me. I gotta grab this fish because there's no way we could do it without grabbing it. Ah, wonderful, set ball. Handy little tool right there. Save your day when you're pike fishing, right? Now, do we keep this guy for shore lunch, Angelo? Uh, I think the boys hopefully will have a couple. and We got a couple already. So I'll put it in the box for now. Put it in the box. You got water That's in there, right? Perfect shore lunch fish. Get some fillets off of that guy. That is absolutely perfect for shore lunch. So if we don't need them, we'll let them go. That's the beauty of a live well. Surprisingly, the voraciousness of these pike proved to be the exception rather than the rule. And after a quick regroup, we decide to head for bigger water. Georgian Bay can be a mean body of water, but we were blessed with a rare, flat, calm afternoon, and our big water convoy rolled out about as smoothly as the Great Lakes will allow. Tucked into a small channel off the main lake, we wound through a maze of rocks and then began our afternoon fish. The sun was high in the sky and warming things up nicely. The pike activity started to pick up. It's going crazy. I'm locked here. You he's tell not, me when you want it he's off. He's not that big, but oh, he's, he's not that big. Wow. But he's definitely, <laughs> definitely a nice pike. Eh? <laughs> that the way he hit me, just in the corner of his mouth to get that. That's perfect out. for getting that hook out. Yeah, I thought the way he hit me, I thought it was a 20 pounder. Well, I thought you, the way you reacted, I thought it was a 20 pounder. <laughs> it's funny because this is the one spot we thought we might pick one up. It's the deepest hole in this bay, and it's got the most weeds in it. That's a nice eating size pike right there. Oh, too. if you were gonna eat pike, yeah. this would be the, yeah. the deal right there. Yep. They're such a pretty fish too, eh? They really are. <laughs> They're such a, and just designed as a predator. Long missile shape, big, huge jaws. I mean, he can literally open up, when he opens up his mouth, he exposes the whole innards of that fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and fast. They're, uh, they're one of the faster fish in freshwater. They're lightning fast. We just got into this back bay and first thing Pete and I both said was if there's going to be pike, this is this is definitely it. He's a 
on, brother. He's on. Doesn't feel that big. He's not running. Not running, but it is a pike. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, nice I'm pike. That for that guy. Nice pike. That's a nice pike. <laughs> he just pike. doesn't know he's hung up yet. No, he's not. He doesn't know he's hooked. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Whoa, nice now pike. he knows. Nice pike, bud. That's now a good one. Now he knows. That's a good one. Watch the trolling motor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got no leader on here. Oh, and I can't see the leader. He's eating it. Okay. Hang on, buddy. Oh, God. Yes. No, no, no. no. Oh, almost, that, almost, almost. Head. Okay, here he comes. This time he's in. Head, head in, head in. Nice. Get it. Look, my net's all screwed up. <laughs> Come on, net. Why would you do that to me? The old twitch bait, and you can't even see it. No, we're going to have to spread those jaws, eh? Yeah. There, it's out. I've been throwing the uh, Yozuri twitch bait most of the morning, but not one with the prism uh, finish inside that really is capturing the sun's glare. Now the sun came out and I figured I'd try something a little shinier and uh, basically switched over to this. And first, I think four casts, I had two fish mm -hmm. on it. And the fifth cast, well, we got that. Yeah. So that tells me that the rest of today, while that sun is still out, we're gonna throw something with a reflective oh, yeah. surface on it. But that's that twitch bait, that new twitch bait that we've been playing with now for the last two years. It is just insane. Oh, look at he's, ready, ready, to he's go. ready to go. Let me just turn him around. There you go, he's buddy. Done. There you go, buddy. Say, I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. That's All a great right. pike, buddy. That's a great. That was for the first trip of the year. That's yeah, a, you know, exactly. That's that what we're looking for. That's all of right the uh, the uh, guessing game that we've been through today, trying to figure out size, color, where, how, when. That's cool. I think there might be one more on that ledge before we yep. go. Buddy. Yeah, one more, bud. Finally, we established a pattern. The translucent Yozuri twitch bait was on fire, and the shallow water pike activity was on. There was only one problem. We only had one of them. And of course, just a few casts after I muttered those very words, a small hammer handle took a run at the gliding bait, missed it completely, and sliced through my 30 pound braid, swimming off with our very last perfectly working twitch bait. This hotspot is an easy to access pike area in Killarney Bay. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. We actually saw way more pike than we caught here. The calm winds and high sunny skies favored the fish, not us. Had it been slightly overcast or cloudy and with a slight breeze, this hotspot could have been on fire. We mostly used Yozuri's 110 millimeter suspending jerk baits and a 3DB twitch bait in the largest size. We incorporated a stop and go retrieve, which really seems to get pike fired up. Although a fluorocarbon wire or titanium leader will impair the bait's action, they're an absolute must if you want to avoid break-offs. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Hey, look at the one following me. Come on, come on, come on. <gasps> that's a big, right that's next a, to the boat. That's a big one. Oh, I think it's a nice bite. Oh, it's a muskie. Oh, it's a muskie. So, even though Mr. I Don't Need a Leader lost our one and only magic pike bait, we had to carry on. Red took us to a nice long point jutting into 8 to 10 feet of water and extending from a big shallow bay. This looked like money. He's better. It can't be a little small one. Can't be. Gotta no, be a, I wouldn't be better than be that rod. It's oh, a heavy rod. It's a nice pike. Oh, it's a muskie. Oh, it's a muskie. Yeah. I think it is. Okay, you know what? Let's not net him. Wow, I'll do him. Yeah, do him without the Yeah, net, we'll do man. him just at the side of the boat. Because the muskie are out of season for another, I think there's another week or something like that. Yeah. Wow, is he ever tough. Okay. So what we'll try and do here, folks, instead of getting this fish in the net, it, it, I mean, it may be better for the fish, but if we can get it off with the hands <sighs> of the pliers, then that's the best thing for this fish. So we'll, we'll try that. And if we have to get him in the net, because it, it's taking more than... You sound like uh, you sounded like Marlon Perkins there. <laughs> and Jim is going to jump out of the helicopter <laughs> on top of the alligator who's chasing the elephant. Anne's can and jump on top easy. of the muskie. <laughs> yeah, but don't you try it, folks. Yeah, Jim will do this. It's easy. Okay, okay I got the bait away from him. So yeah. gonna... Got him. Good Ooh. job. Good job, buddy. <sighs> nice fish. <laughs> that is one tough... Esox right there, man. That fish was fought. Wow.
Incidental catches of out-of-season fish are often unavoidable when fishing for early season pike, as they share their territory with so many of our late spawning game fish. That being said, it's crucial to take care when dealing with these fish as their seasons are closed for a reason. Musky, for example, at this time of year, have finished spawning. They need all their energy in the coming weeks to feed up and get back in shape. With not much time left in our pursuit of a showstopper northern, we decided to take a break and have one of Red's famous northern pike shore lunches. That was sweet music to our ears. We were famished and knew just how good pike tastes. And if you want a lesson in the art of filleting a pike, Red is the perfect teacher. Lunch break's over, boys. Time to get back at her. We returned to the vicinity where we saw that giant pike earlier and continued to fan cast around a small island nearby in search of the big one. Fishing can be a very humbling and frustrating game. Not just when pike fishing, but pretty much any species. Sometimes you know big fish are all around you and not one of them will play the game. Oh, look at the one following me. Come on, come on, come on. <gasps> yeah, it's better, way better. Oh, oh come on. Oh. That's a good one. Oh. That's the one we want right there. That was an arrow right there. So you know that color's not working either. That's a big... Right that's next a, to the boat. That's a big one, man. That was... Yes. 20 pounder, right? Or not, I don't know, 20 pounder, but 15 pounder. 15 but yeah. anyway, yeah. But to be honest, that's what keeps us coming back. Getting There, brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to today's gorgeous pike fishing destination, we first drove north on Highway 400, which eventually turns into Highway 69. Next, we turned west on Highway 637. We followed 637 all the way into the town of Killarney. Next, we turned right on Channel Street and finally ended up at the gorgeous Sportsman's Inn Resort and Marina. From there, you have access to some amazing multi-species fishing waters. The Sportsman's Inn sits perched atop the pebbled shores of the North Channel, surrounded by glistening waters and windswept pines that characterize Georgian Bay. It's a full-service resort offering modern amenities and affordable docking rates, along with a world-class marina in the Killarney Channel. Dining here is an experience that extends well beyond delicious food. All in all, the Sportsman's Inn is as much a family destination as it is a fishing destination. It's a must visit. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure. 